I'm the librarian at CERN and uh, has been with CERN for about uh, 12 years now. And um, CERN Library is different from other libraries, I think. I mean, we, have, we, we hear, you know, that other libraries have problems in getting in contact with their researchers and they don't really feel that they have a role in the research process and so on. For the CERN Library, that is completely different. We really feel like being in the middle of the research process. All research from CERN should be made publicly available. Of course, that means that it could be published behind toll barriers, but CERN Library has always offered free access to this by purchasing reprints and sending them all over the world, you know, also preprints, of course. I mean, we have a preprint tradition dating more than 50 years back. And uh, so that, in a way, that open access is not a new uh, thing for us. It's just that now we have new methods for doing it, and, and that makes it very, very interesting. Physicists started to circulate preprints in the mid-50s. And uh, of course, at, at the time, it was on paper. Also, other communities have been circulating preprints, but I think it was in particle physics that they were the first to put these preprints in a system, actually establish a catalog, w which was done at, uh, at uh, CERN. And uh, later also, it was a similar catalog started in, in the United States at the, the Stanford Linear Accelerator Center, based on, on the example from CERN. Um, when the web came along, uh, then uh, this could, of course, be mapped onto an electronic system, which then happened to be archive set up by Paul Ginsberg at uh, Los Alamos at the time. Uh, CERN has also developed its own electronic means of handling the preprints, which is today uh, the CERN document server. And, and this has been a very, very important tool for us to, to, to understand the whole mechanism of, of how uh, preprints, uh, postprints, etc., um, works out. You know, and uh, and it's today an important daily tool for our physicists. It, it has been advocated that open access publishing should not be touched before we have full open access to the preprints. In our field, we actually have quite a good coverage. Today we are able to offer about 75% of the CERN output open access through preprints, which is very, very high compared to, to, to most other institutions. I mean, uh, we, we have heard in, I mean, in all conferences, you hear people you know, proudly tell about a few hundred preprints in their repositories, <laughs> while we actually have 75% of the current output and 52% of, uh, of the CERN production over the 52 years the organization has existed. This means that over preprint coverage, open access now is so high that we think it's the natural next step would be to go into open access publishing. And in, in particle physics, uh, accelerator physics, excuse me, we are already there. But they have um, already their own, all the preprints out there, all the conference papers out there, and, and they have uh, through the physical uh, review special topics, accelerator and beams, also the peer-reviewed journal. So they have the full circle there in place. So, but I mean, that's a much less complex uh, subject field, if you like. I mean, it's much more limited, much more focused. So the next step would now be to, to, to go into um, theoretical and experimental physics. And, and we feel ready to go. First of all, a repository is not filled by itself. We have worked very, very closely with the secretaries in, in the different departments. I mean, in a way, we are lucky because uh, still uh, our researchers uh, think it is a kind of a prestigious thing to have a preprint number on, on, the, on the paper. And these preprint numbers are still handled out by uh, strong secretaries, if you like, sitting around the, the, the organization. And um, as soon as they get a number, of course, then the secretary has a, a copy of the paper, and, and the secretary would be typically the, the person submitting those papers to, to our system, populating the repository. But of course, there are also plenty of CERN papers which would never have a, have a number, you know, and these papers are not necessarily submitted by the authors. Actually, the authors themselves are not very good at submitting papers. So, so we have a whole team of people chasing up uh, these papers. And now we are also soon going to systematically contact authors who, who uh, have published papers which we have not got and ask for, for a copy of, of, of their um, 
either preprint or, or postprint, if, if that would be possible. The future of um, particle physics information is still very unclear, I think, but there are very, very many exciting things w which should happen. I think today we have many different parties who are not, I mean, they are not against each other, but they are operating in parallel, if you like. I mean, we have the archive, which is, of course, very important. We have Slack Spires, which is another information provider. We have the CERN document server. We have the particle data group, which is working with data, which we so far in the CERN library have not looked into at all, more or less. And, and of course, we have the publishers. And it would be very, very timely to bring all these people now together and, and see what could be done and, and, and where particle physics information will be in 10 years from now. It, it is clear that the change is coming now. When we started to discuss open access with the publisher uh, about, about a year's time ago, um, some publishers were quite open some publishers were absolutely against and other publishers are embracing open access. Since then it seems like that all publishers really understand that we, we are serious about this and actually all of them are now coming up with different solutions to open access. It's not necessarily solutions which we are in favor of and I'm quite sure that those publishers who are not willing to go along the lines which the community wants to, that they will not necessarily be our partner for the future and of course this will open up for new publishers to get into the game. We are quite fortunate in, in particle physics because it's a science which is so well organized. And being well organized, of course, we can more easily influence our publishers to, 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 to behave and, uh, in, in the way we would like them to serve us, you know. The big laboratories are going to take a lead, that, that, that is clear. And uh, I mean, CERN being the, the biggest laboratory is for the time being leading this transition towards open access. And we are going to establish a consortium which will finance uh, the, the, the transition to, to the new publishing paradigm. In this period, the in intention is that, that we will give time to the funding agencies to, to change their funding mechanisms so that in the future research grants will include money for publication fees.